Hey, good morning and welcome to episode 76 of Talking to Artists, casual conversation with artists, art galleries, uh, just to get a bit of an understanding of what goes on behind the curtains and behind the scenes of being a, uh, a professional artist. So today I'm really excited to, uh, to talk to someone who I have not met before. I think he's got an interesting history and uh, he started off as a graffiti artist. Uh, and so I'm just going to go right on and bring in Atypical. I'm going to invite him on and oh, let's see. And here he is. Hello. Hi. How's it going, Kate? How, it's going really well. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, you hear me perfectly, everything like that? Right. You're perfect. Yes. Good. Uh, good. <laughs> Good, and I'm uh, not I'm not at the cottage, so the chances of our Wi-Fi dropping are pretty good. Too. All right, good, good to hear. <laughs> so um, actually, I just love to start off with uh, the name Atypical. So obviously uh, not your real name, but the moniker you use for your art. Um, yes. I'm just curious how you came about that. Um, so I came up with it when I first started painting 11 years ago. Um, I was always curious to paint. I'm 39 now. Um, I learned later in life how to paint and self-taught. Um, I moved to San Diego from the East Coast in the States and um, was going through some hard times and then started painting. And I always wanted to do like a clothing line by the name of Typical. And um, just things in life, like Atypical just stood out more and then becoming a graffiti artist and things like that. The name Atypical stood out more and made more meaningful in my purpose of it and the message behind it. And so did you start off as a, as a graffiti artist or were you kind of looking just to be an artist and that was your form that you kind of took or how was I, that journey? All right. So I was bought a canvas, just a small two canvases on my birthday, 11 years ago, August 5th. Um, I was drinking a whole lot, going through some substance abuse, and was trying to find an outlet to make meaning to my life or, like, find some some type of fulfillment besides doing, keep going down the path I was going. I had recently mm -hmm. had been kicked out of college, moved to a, another side of the country, and was just working in the bar industry and was going through some deep depression. And... uh bought two canvases and I liked the way they turned out and then kept buying small canvases at like Michael's and stuff and did it as a hobby. And then I came across Shepherd Ferry and Banksy before they were really big. Didn't meet them, but like would see that I always noticed graffiti around and um, always really liked it. We'd go look at it and before I even painted. And I, I started doing research on it when I started getting into painting and noticing I had a talent and a skill. So I started buying books about them and doing a lot of research and then like graffiti hunting. And that's when I started messing around with spray paint and graffiti stuff and got into that and then started making a name in San Diego with a tip. So you, so you grew up in San Diego, I gather. Um, I, my adult life, I also was born in the Philadelphia area and then young life, like high school, elementary school in Virginia. Oh, cool. So you've moved around. So, and, yeah, San, around. and San Diego is probably one of my favorite U.S. cities. Yes. It's, uh, great. I know we were hoping to meet in person. Yes. And do Art yeah, San Diego. I, know, I know. I was very upset <laughs> that show got canceled. But there's Me too. Been. But maybe it'll just be that much better the next time yes. we have to do it. Yes. But um, does does San Diego have a, a history of graffiti art? Like I know some cities like Miami and like Montreal is very, very supportive of graffiti and creates graffiti alleys and all yes. the external art galleries. Yes, there, there, there is. It's not as big as like the places you mentioned or LA, but there is a good, good upbringing and like places off the trail and well-known people there as well. So it is very supportive. Um, I would do the big shows, not the, not the one we were talking about being in, but I've done pretty big shows and people recognize the name Atypical and my symbol also. So yes. That's great. And so why the symbol and not the name? Is that just, is that just a natural extension from graffiti art? 
Um, so the symbol, all right, so more of what atypical also means to me. Um, so I was adopted growing up, and um, I never felt like I, like, fit in in the back of my head. And, like, my parents, who I love to get to death, they raised me great. Uh, we were very hard, strict, born-again Christians and raised me in an upbringing where I didn't fully see I fit in and always felt like I didn't fit, like, fit the mold and I always had to act like I was. So I always felt like I was upside down. Hmm. So that's that's the, the basics behind it. And then, so they moved me to Virginia to a place where is kind of a hardcore Christian town where Liberty University and Jerry Falwell was. I don't know. Names. Yeah, yeah, for but sure. Those are the schools I got kicked out of. And um, I just, I didn't really, under, like, when I started finally painting, I finally, like, felt who I was, too. And, like, instead of it being an upside-down person, it's more of, this is who I am, this is the mold I want to be, and I don't have a problem with who I am, and this is who sticks out to me, and that's why it's atypical. Right. I'm comfortable with being that. I think my, my mother is also adopted, so and also had an amazingly supportive family. But I do see in her too that it leaves a bit of a hole that you don't have your history. And even for myself, like I don't know my family history, and it is a weird, it's kind of a weird thing that does sometimes leave you a little bit adrift, even though you've yeah, had yeah. lots of love and support. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. some like there's a, it's always something in the back of your mind, whether you don't want to talk about it, do want to talk about it. It is something that like. And either way, you you still can show love and still everything like that, but it does resonate as part of you. Mm -hmm. Well, and I can only imagine that being in a a very uh, religious household too, where there's a law, so a lot of rules and things that if you're constantly feeling that's against your internal nature, that does set up a bit of a scenario of depression and feeling like you're not authentic. I would think. Yes, and I, if I'm there, let them down if they find out I feel this way. Black mm -hmm. sheep and stuff like that, and we've come on good terms. Um, my mom might actually watch this when it goes to video. <laughs> like they they understand <laughs> part of it. They I don't think they understand the extent of the graffiti I've done, but I think that they are proud of me now because I've tried to do good with it. Also, like I try to donate when I sell pieces or T-shirts to charities and local things like that too. Well, that's amazing. And were yeah. you always creative? Like, how did you come across art versus music or poetry or, I don't know, <laughs> baseball uh, or whatever? I, I was athletic growing up, and I was pushed in athlete, athletic events really well. Um, I don't know. I just came across in the depression. Like, it just – it spoke to me, but I wasn't – arts weren't pushed hard on me. Or, like, so my parents don't understand that side or my mm -hmm. family doesn't understand it um so it wasn't well an option and and many don't because yeah. there's very few parents that are like oh excellent my child's going to go to school and become an artist yeah, right i yeah, mean that's, that's unfortunately the reality of this field yeah. although you know we kind of know that if you work hard at the business part of it you certainly can make a good living yes. at it yes yeah and um oh, i completely lost my train of thought because i was going to ask you something else but it feels like um it feels like a lot of your, well, I, I know a lot of artists that I talk to, art does seem to be a real um, outlet for depression and anxiety and all these things. And I think that artists generally use art to kind of get that out. Um, but also I think we've seen a lot of that during the pandemic and you can see by the increase of number of people who have sort of experienced art or decided yes. to be artists or, you know, so I think it's very under understood, misunderstood as a really healthy form of therapy. Yeah. Um, to get the blacks out. Hundred percent agree on that. I've seen a lot of friends either ask me for advice or just see them posting stuff too. Like so, it's mm -hmm. it's great. It's good to see, especially in, in what's been going on in the world the last few years. Yeah, I know. And I just uh, wrote about. I just talked about it a little earlier because I uh, I typically um, paint when I'm feeling joyful, and that's been a more challenging state of mind to get into. Yeah. Um, and I was really doing well until probably about. I don't know, about three or four months ago. It's almost like you see the end of the tunnel and that's when you kind of realize all the stuff you've kind of maybe lost or missed out on or whatever. Mm -hmm. But kind of have to keep looking forward, I guess, is probably yes. the best, uh, safest way to do it. 
I loved I loved your story actually. I was looking at your Instagram about your peace timeline and how you had a concept and idea of what you wanted to do, and I guess the spray paint was too thin, so it kind of got yes. ruined. But yes. that you understood and were able to kind of be flexible in seeing something Connect different. Connect with it, yes. And so is that something that you typically incorporate into your creative practice, or was that just you, your mind is fluid enough that you can kind of recognize something even if that wasn't what was planned? That's a good question. I think both. It's happened a couple times with paintings, and I've just gone and then do, done totally different things. But yes, I... Uh, I usually have a structure to things, but like uh, I, uh, I keep involving evolving in my art too. So it's it's a learning process, and yes, I'm like always open to ideas and and things mm -hmm. like that. It it does feel like in looking through your Instagram, though a lot of the a lot of the breakthrough pieces have kind of seemed to have come from either hardship or things that were not anticipated or problems that then kind of ended up being turned around into something that was really positive. And I think that's a pretty amazing uh, skill to be able to have. Yes. No, I appreciate that. Yes. It, it I agree with you in that. Um, it's a lot of my painting is raw emotion and like hard, rough patches of my life, but like trying to, to find purpose through it and that's kind of why I, yeah, is why i go by atypical and not my name and mm -hmm. try, try to put behind it like i i can't just paint and just go paint like it i have to be like focused in and it has to be meaningful for for the most part um sometimes i'll just do abstract stuff and just do it for fun but most of the time uh, to get locked in to go hardcore, I have to like there has to be meaning behind the paintings. And the pieces that you you do that look almost more uh, analytical and geometric and kind of mathematical are those also sort of spray paint, or is are you do where you work on a couple of different collections, or is it kind of morphing? It is more um, there half spray paint, half acrylic. Acrylic. It always is. Places I've been or places that mean something or somebody that inspired me from where they've been. Um, I use uh, a lot of hand cut stencils for custom for the pieces like the stripes. Like you see the stripes back there falling. Mm -hmm. I, I cut the stencils for those stripes. Um, I have the roses cut. I cut the roses all the time. Um, I'm working on one now. You can see here. Like, it takes me hours oh, to wow. do it, but yeah. And then I can use it a couple times, but yeah, I use those in the paintings and they have all, all different types of other ones. And then I do inks also, and then yeah, acrylics and a lot of acrylic ink pens too. So it's all hmm. uh, a new concept to me, but it's, I think it's working pretty well for me and people are starting to respond to it. So Yeah. Well, it's, the stripes are really interesting um, kind of, iconography that kind of seems to kind of pull a lot of the pieces together, which is, I think mm -hmm. is kind of interesting as well. Yes. And so do you kind of tend to work in, like, do you tend to do any, uh, I would say more traditional spray paint graffiti art anymore, or are you kind of using the skills learned and then morphing into something different? All right. That's a, that's a good question. So since moving here, I moved in September, 2019. I have not done anything here because I'm scared to. Mm -hmm. um, I still don't have my visit or my permit residency. Um, the, COVID, the lockdowns backed up all my paperwork. And then yeah. during it, we've had a baby and my wife's pregnant again right now. Oh, and congratulations. I, thank you. Thank you. It's been a very, it's very, very uh, interesting time moving somewhere and then going straight into lockdown and having a baby. And not being able yeah. to bran branch out. <laughs> it's <and> very small. <laughs> yes. I, I, and then not, not being able to show my art or know where to go or to meet people. And like it's been, it's been interesting trying to branch out in, for, or in Canada, per se, in Ontario. Because mm -hmm. most of my paintings I send back to Southern California. But yeah, it's, uh, it's been interesting because of, of lockdown. So I haven't been able to do graffiti because I am scared I will get shipped 
set back <laughs> if I get caught. That's legitimate. But, you know, I, it's funny because I just think I read a call where they're actually looking for graffiti artists because they're really looking to beautify a lot of the areas underneath the bridges and stuff in Toronto. So Okay, interesting. If, uh, if I can find it, I'll send it to you. you but, it, send, uh, send it to me and I will Google that too. I've done, I've done a big wall under a bridge somewhere in my town, but um, yeah, I haven't done much. I'm a little nervous too, but it might branch out because I get the itch for it. Yeah, I'm like always them. curious. So how, how do you actually go approach that? Like, I'm always amazed with, uh, you know, graffiti artists that paint so big and seem to have a real concept of the whole vision, but you're so close to it when you have to work on it. Uh -huh. Is there a different technique? So I would do a lot of, um, I would, I do not the huge piece. I did a couple of huge pieces, but a lot of times I would go pre-measure the things I'd go over, which would be a lot of bus stop, stop benches, huge like bus stop, like advertisements, and then go home, cut it out on paper, paint a whole painting on the paper, and then go at night and wheat paste it on. So you like uh, wallpaper glue it on, and it sticks up there. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so you're not actually spraying directly on the concrete or whatever. Not all the time. I, there, there's times I would do that as well, but a lot of I, I found it a lot easier for more public places. I, I tried to get over a lot of my thing was to I was trying to cover up things in the neighborhood of things I didn't agree with, like political ads, McDonald's ads, like just things, ads just thrown in our face for like junk. So mm -hmm. a lot of my time, it was in, like, public eye graffiti, not, like, right. even under a bridge. So I would go do that stuff, too, but a lot of times like, it would, I'd have to be in and out quick because there would be cops and high people everywhere. Mm -hmm. I do uh, I do love – I mean, I think graffiti is just fascinating, and I do love – I used to have uh, an office in the back – alley all had just amazing graffiti art and it was just so fun to kind of come in in the morning it's like oh that's a new piece that's or new, yep. piece of uh, good yeah. work done <laughs> you uh -huh. know? and then you go around and like how long will it be until someone touches it and covers it up and yes well i don't know i seem to find that the good stuff t seems to be fairly safe even from tagging from what i've seen which i'm so thankful for that you know i, I appreciate the whole genre of the graffiti artist is about kind of creating your space and making your word and, and protest, but I, at least I'm happy that they respect kind of creative skill and talent. Yes. yes. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. I, I really <laughs> do. I, yeah. I still like just going around looking at it and finding places. I haven't found much here, but I, it's, it's been interesting with having the baby and my wife pregnant again and everything like that. Cause I, I have gone to Toronto a little bit to do some graffiti hunting but i haven't gotten it hardcore i've been to montreal and that mm -hmm. was amazing to me is when i got to spend a little bit of time there like it blew me away yeah well and they have a whole uh it's like a uh an art walk that they map everything and you can kind of go uh -huh. and check it all out i remember doing that once and oh my god it was just it's amazing like the yes. the quality yeah. and the just the diversity is pretty incredible yep yeah that, yeah so i, I went and checked I, that out I, yeah, for sure. Well, when we can all travel and stay in a hotel and do whatever, right? Yep. Everything. My to-do list is getting longer and longer. My bucket list. Uh -huh. yep. <laughs> so what made you decide to come to Canada then? All right. So my wife walked into my bar. I bartended at in San Diego. I fell in love with her. And <laughs> That's lovely. Uh -huh, she just lives. She's defending her PhD December 7th and December 8th next month so um she was finishing her phd um an artist bartender and she now are, we have a almost nine-year-old in january and um for them to move it made a lot more sense for me to move because then it would have to get approved by uh lilia's dad which i am pretty much her full-time dad and Mm -hmm. just made sense at the moment and why not like I, like we fell in love pretty hard and yeah. made, made do so that's what happened well that's lovely yes 
And yeah, it's interesting though, because I've talked uh, recently to a number of artists who have either just moved or um, like went from, you know, she came from New Zealand to the U S to Toronto and it's hard at, at the best of times to kind of find your people and, and find your kind of art niche within a new city, but especially during COVID particularly challenging. But uh, I understand that you're working with Joanna at Remark Consulting to kind of yes, help yes. you with that. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, it's been a, yeah, she's been a great help. Yeah. I'm really glad we got to connect. Um, she was a juror for a, gallery showing that I turned in and she gave me a award for seconds so then I contacted her later so I nice. don't know it like don't know anyone I'm just trying to reach out you know but she's helped me out quite a bit uh I haven't talked to her we've been playing phone tag but it's been a couple rough weeks with my wife finishing her PhD and morning sickness but yes she's been great help mm -hmm. put me in the right directions got me introduced to you and trying to introduce yeah. me to other people and she has connections in San Diego and she's trying to get me to go to Naples, Florida too. So trying yeah. to get, get there too. So yeah, she's great. And I got to think that uh, with your style of work, Miami is probably a natural for you. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, uh, the, the show that we were being together in San Diego, they do something in Miami too. I don't know if you've done that show. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that one. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll pick your brain. <laughs> another time about it see see what you have to say or send you a message so it doesn't have to like take up time but the guy in charge called me and tried telling me he thought my stuff would do great there too so something i was looking into but we found out that we had another one on the way so i was push, push that off for maybe next year well yeah especially because i think you know, those shows are always expensive. And, you know, you, I do agree that you have to invest in your business and spend the money to do those and get the word out there. But you also have to make the right decisions. And with COVID, it's kind of hard to know how yes. busy those shows are going to be, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So the other thing I have to say I just love about your work are your titles. Like, they're almost like little stories. Um, so how do you come up with those? I always find naming work is so hard. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm always amazed when other people come up with great ideas. <laughs> Um, a lot in in the past, a lot of my titles. So I listen to music constantly. I have my headphones in constantly when I'm painting. Um, I like to listen to like harder music, a lot of like hardcore punk, screamo, hip hop. A lot of times there'll be like either lyrics I hear through songs as I'm painting. It resonates with me with the painting I'm painting and like. I understand what they're saying and like that's where I'm getting into my work and that's it. And then other times I the late the newer ones too are just have to do with I don't even know I how I I've been coming up with the new ones honestly. It just hits me at some point and I'm like, I like this this makes sense to what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Oh that's cool. Very cool. It, it took so me a long it took me a long time to come up with names. Like at first, before like when I first started showing too, uh, that was the worst. Was trying to come up with names for paintings. Like I was like, I don't know what to say right now. And like you're trying to get into shows, and they want the names for the painting. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's an abstract painting. I don't. I don't know what you want me to say for this right now. No, I get that. I'm, I'm embarrassed to admit, too, that actually one of the things I had to do yesterday was drive up to this woman's house. I had sold her a piece of art about two months ago and <laughs> I forgot to sign it and forgot to name it. And she's like, hey, it'd be really great if you could maybe sign it. I'm like, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> like, yeah. So I'm sitting there in her living room trying to go, oh, my God, the pressure of trying to find a name that, first of all, I know I haven't already used, right? <laughs> so anyway, it looked good. She was happy, but it made me feel a bit like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very yeah. professional. <laughs> You pulled it off, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what's uh, what's kind of next for you? Obviously, I can see you've got a lot on your plate with your wife's PhD and a new uh, baby. And, um, yeah, actually, you know. so I bartend in, here in town at a place called – I'm in Waterloo. I don't know if we said that yet. Um, I bartend at a place called the Bower Kitchen. It is part of the Charcoal restaurant chain. They just opened up a beer town in Toronto. Um, it's kind of a really cool high-end – a bar that is at the bottom of a really nice uh, condo, and there's a whole bunch of condos 
around it. Tomorrow morning, I am hanging a bunch of my art pieces for sale in the bar. So they'll be kind of cool. I can, and we have good high end clients. So I'll be able to be making drinks and trying to sell my art too. <laughs> that sounds like a good combination. <laughs> yeah. So do you want another drink? Do you want a painting yet? Do you want another one? Oh, yeah, right. right. Oh, I think you need another drink. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need to take that home with you. <laughs> uh huh. So that's, that's my next step right now. Um, kind of looking into what's coming up. Um, like, I know everything in Southern California. I've been trying to stay on the loop in Toronto, but like COVID and the baby and the PhD, everything yeah. is, everything's mumbled in my, in my brain. So I'm trying to find things. Well, right. not that I'm trying to do advertising, but I would maybe recommend looking at joining the artist network in Toronto. Okay. It's a not-for-profit that helps artists with the business of art. I'm the chair, but um, it's it helps okay. to kind of build your network. And okay, I can do that based being in Waterloo too. Oh, absolutely. My sister's okay. a member. She's in Vancouver. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will send you a message after this. <laughs> My memory My is uh, is really bad with names. No, that's cool. And I'm not really supposed to do a sales pitch on this, but I do think uh, that it's a no, really that, helpful way of connecting. No, that'd, you know? be, that'd be great. Yes. And have you been doing a lot of stuff online, um, trying to through COVID like selling online or. Um, yeah, because that's pretty much what I've been doing. I kind of sold in person because I haven't really shown here really besides I did. I'm in arts pay here in Waterloo. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Probably not, but I no, I haven't. There, it, it's a great place for being in Waterloo, and they do show stuff like that. But I did have a studio, but it got torn down or getting torn down soon, so they took it out and had a gallery there. But it is it was during COVID, so it's been it's been hard to, to branch out. That's mm -hmm. why I'm excited about putting stuff in the bar, so people in town now can see my stuff because people have heard about it, but like I've been able to. To show, yeah. So, yeah. Well, so, that's exciting, yeah. though. Yes, yeah. I'm very excited about it, yeah. I was excited about this, and then excited about tomorrow, because it's been it's been interesting trying to get connected since since COVID and moving here. It's, it's a weird mixture of time. Yeah, and I think it's always hard. Like, you know, I've lived in Toronto all my life, but when I started looking and pursuing my art professionally, you know, I have lots of contacts in the city, but none in the art world, right? So yes. it's also about trying to find your people. And, you know, I, the one thing that I think is great about the Toronto art scene, and by Toronto, I assume like GTA, Waterloo, Hamilton, um, but it's a very supportive community, which means okay. that when you get in there, then people will help you to kind of go, this show is good, that show is not good okay. <laughs> for your that, particular that's, art. Right? That's right. good you know? to hear because I have been, yeah, I've been looking for that, but like haven't, found that yet so i had that in mm -hmm. san diego but yes i have not i don't know who to talk to here or or get involved yet you get what i mean like it's been uh searching but i haven't found it quite yet yeah well you know it's it's always hard <laughs> it's always hard yeah. to find venues to sell your work so um yeah i just i think we're probably about at the end of the interview unless there's anything else that you felt like you wanted to share or whatever no it sounds great but I always like to end my interviews with, um, you know, if time, money, everything were no option at all, what would your big hairy ass goal be? My big, um, what would yours be? Give me an example. I would like to have a solo show at the MoMA. Doesn't have to be practical or even achievable. That just would be my hairy ass goal. <laughs> I would like to have... That's funny. You're the first person in 75 questions who's ever asked me that. <laughs> I, I it, My brain works very differently. Uh, so I have to understand questions. So, like, I didn't know. It. I got it now. I think I would like to own a small shop somewhere where I sell my own stuff and paint. That would be my, my big goal. Mm -hmm. where, where I can do, like, clothing and then painting to, like, everything that'd be awesome a typical shop uh yeah having my symbol on on a sign of a building that i own or work out of would be like my goal yeah i could totally visualize that yes <laughs> that's pretty cool yeah that's, well that's what I, i'm working for so 
label. I certainly label hope that. that that comes true for you. Yeah. Yes, me too. And maybe you can just let everybody know your uh, Instagram handle and your website so people can find you. Uh, my Instagram handle is going to be atypical.fineart. And what was the other one? Instagram. Insta oh. uh, that what? That was it. What's your website? Oh, uh, website is www.atypical.site. That site. Okay. That's right. All right. Yes. Excellent. Well, yes. I certainly look, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, no, Canada thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Yes. And I look forward to meeting you in real life next yes, time. Maybe yes, I'm in we... Waterloo or you're in Toronto or we're in oh, San yes. Diego. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Let's, That'd let's be super make it fun. happen though. But yes, I'll message you about the other stuff too. If I have questions too. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. Yeah. Anytime. All right. Okay, thank cool. you very much. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Talk to you soon. All right. Uh, and so this interview will obviously be on Instagram and on Facebook and eventually on the podcast Talking to Artists. So I encourage you to check it out. Um, coming up next, I uh, just want to remind people that the Toronto One of a Kind Art Fair is happening in person. I will be there with a bunch of my friends. So I'm super excited. Um, there are pretty strict COVID protocols and timed entries. So that makes it uh, nice and safe for everybody, which is fabulous. Coming up next is... Uh, Julia, oh, Julia Whitney Barnes, sorry, I completely blanked on her name. She does a really interesting uh, cyanotypes and flowers. And if you don't know what that is, join me next week. And after that, the uh, second interview with Laurie Mirabelli, since I got so much grief for the horrible sound quality of the first one, uh, since the first interview, and now she's gone through so many cool changes, um, has got a really robust teaching practice in, in place. She's moved out, out of the city from Toronto. So look forward to hearing from her too. Um, and uh, look forward to seeing you all. Thank you so much as always for the support and for watching the show. And this will be on my Instagram if you missed it. Thanks so much. Have a great day.